One complication for friction is that we have to know something about the system to figure out what its direction is. It can be fairly complicated and confusing, but if we just bear in mind what's going on, it makes life simpler. So when we're looking at the force of friction between two objects, remember first that friction is always tangent to the interface between the objects. If we have some part of the force, or if we have a force that's not fully parallel to the interface, we'll call the parallel component the friction and the normal component normal force. With kinetic friction, the direction on an object is to always oppose sliding between the two objects. So whatever direction that they're moving relative to each other, that's the direction that friction is going to oppose for either object. Static friction is in whatever direction is necessary to keep the surfaces in contact. And if it turns out that the magnitude or the possible magnitude of static friction, the maximum value that's given by the formula mu times n, is not enough to keep the object static, well then it won't be static and it won't be static friction applying anymore. We'll be back to kinetic friction. Let's make things a little more complicated. Let's look at the force of friction on an incline. What I've shown here is a block of mast m, not at rest, it's sliding uphill on an incline at angle alpha. It'll be useful in this case to use our inclined coordinates. Here I've shown plus x being up the ramp, plus y being normal to the ramp, away from the ramp. Here we'll make a free body diagram for the forces acting on the block. The obvious force that we know is the force of gravity, its weight, mg. There's a normal force which is going to be acting in the plus y direction, and the force of friction. In this case, since the object is sliding up the ramp, the force of friction is going to be down the ramp. So let's figure out what the net force is on this object so we can then determine its acceleration. Since these are vectors, we have to worry about their extents in two directions, x and y. So now we'll look at the x and y components according to this coordinate system of these forces, the weight, the normal force, the force of friction, and their sum, the net force. So if you break them down to the x and y components, the force of weight is straight down with magnitude mg. In this coordinate system, straight down is going to be negative in both the x and y directions. The extent in the x direction is going to be related to the sine of the angle alpha. So that's minus mg sine alpha for the x component and minus mg cosine alpha for the y component. And we see that if alpha is zero, the x component is going to be zero and the y component will be all of it mg, which is just like we need. The normal force is whatever is needed to keep the acceleration in the y direction zero. It's not going to be accelerating into the ramp or away from the ramp. So in this case, the normal force just is the negative of the y component of the force of weight. The force of friction is the normal force, the magnitude of the normal force, times the coefficient of friction, mu. The direction which tells us whether the component is going to be negative or positive. We determine from the direction of sliding. Here we've got our block sliding uphill, so the force of friction is going to be opposing that. The force of friction is going to be pointing downhill, thus the negative. The net force in the y direction, it has to be zero. Our object, again, is not going to be accelerating away from or into the ramp. In the x direction, we just add together what we have, minus mg sine alpha, and minus mu mg cosine alpha. Both of those terms have a factor of mg in them, so we can factor that out. We get minus mg sine alpha plus mu cosine alpha. So first of all, we see that the net force is necessarily in the downhill direction. Both the object's weight and friction are pushing it in the downhill direction. And friction makes it more of a downhill force than the weight alone would be. So the object sliding up the ramp is going to slow down faster because there's friction. What happens if the object is sliding downhill? So we'll have exactly the same situation now, but with the object sliding downhill, basically our analysis is pretty much the same, with the exception that the direction of the force of friction is reversed. Again, it's opposing the sliding between these two surfaces. That now means the force of friction is uphill, that's the plus x direction, because the object is sliding downhill. So we'll break these forces into their x and y components again. The weight breaks down exactly the same way. Normal force exactly the same way. The force of friction, we just reverse its direction. Now its x component is in the positive direction. And we add these together to make a net force, 
and factor out again a factor of mg, but now we have minus mg times the sine of alpha minus mu cosine of alpha. Negative x is the direction downhill on the ramp, positive x is the direction uphill on the ramp. If the friction is very small, if mu is very small, and we can neglect that mu cosine alpha, then the object is accelerating down the hill. It's sliding very freely, no friction, and its weight is pulling it downhill. If the force of friction is great, in fact, if the force of friction is great enough, that mu cosine alpha is greater than the sine of alpha, then the sine of this frictional force in the x direction now becomes positive, the net force is upwards, and even though the object is sliding downhill, it'll be slowing down if the force of friction is great enough. If the force of friction exactly cancels the x component of the weight, then the object will be sliding down the ramp at a constant speed.